Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? So good to hear your voice. A little better, but not well yet. Um, How are you doing? Okay, I'm all right. Can't complain. Excellent. Can't complain. Excellent. How is your family from Australia? Yeah, okay. They didn't stay too long. Um, they stayed with us only for like a overnight, basically, you know, for a day. Uh, but they, uh, yeah, they. I think they went yesterday. They are going on some sort of cruise, uh, ship cruise, I think. Uh, they're going to, yeah, to Barcelona, and then from there on, they're going to visit other places. Lovely, lovely. Yes. And, and what's um, the weather like? Actually, now, believe it or not, it's sunny outside. But yesterday, it was really windy, and <laughs> a lot of things were blown you know, away or, you know, whatever we had outside is just blown away or it's been moved. It was really windy. It's still windy outside. I can see the trees moving, you know, in the branches, but it's not as bad. It's not as bad. It's a bit sunny, so I'm, I'm all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope that many students turn up because I can't use my voice as a prescription. I shouldn't use it at all. Really? Because oh. yes, because I've got uh, the day off today, mm -hmm. and in eight hours' time, I should be sitting for an exam. And in the exam, uh, I have to use my voice because oh, it's no. two parts: written and oral. And oh. I am not prepared for the exam as well as I feel I should be. Mm -hmm. But I turn to your class because it's a way of relaxing oh. and, and getting energy for the exam. But I um, hope some more students turn up. Yes, well, I'm, I'm really, um, I don't know, I feel very sad, you know, that you have to go through all this now. And because uh, of the weather, because it's of the just weather. A change of you weather can't, isn't it? Yes, you can't imagine now the wind <laughs> is blowing so fast, so hard. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Ah, oh, you are eaten. Yes, I can see. He's got play doh in his hand. He's just saying, I've got play doh. He just woke up. Ah, play doh. Oh, he said, Go, yes. Mama. Hey, good boy. Oh, but don't make a mess, yes? There you go. All right. Yes, so, um, so I, I know the wind here is really bad as well. So are you, are, you, are you taking any medication? You must be taking medication. To, to no, 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 no. They didn't send me. No, they only send me vapor for all the laryngitis and mm. the farring, farring and larynx. And, and only that because they say that if it takes 10 days, then it's something uh, or a virus or mm. a bacteria. But if not, it's only the weather that is affecting me, and mm -hmm. I shouldn't care much. But what I'm worried is that when I woke up this dawn, because it's not this morning, <laughs> <laughs> I started coughing. So there is something that is going worse, not better. Oh, no. Yes, that's what I'm worried. But, but you can... Oh. Yes. I mean, you're able to speak a lot, a lot more than uh, ah, you know, yes, than, than, than Friday. Yes, I, yes, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm. Maybe, maybe ready. this is like uh, it takes. I have to get get through a certain stage, you know. For um, you have to like for it to recover, you have to experience this um, certain phlegm in your in your throat and the coughing. I I just hope it doesn't, you know, uh, d deteriorate. Or that doesn't become worse. Yes, <laughs> what I, I'm I'm sure there is a great element of uh, stress and anxiety, not only because the exam 
today's exam, mm. but tomorrow I've got the visit of my didactics teacher to the practice class. It's mm. the first visit. And the teacher is so sweet and oh, so good. is excellent. And the group of students is out of this world. I can't describe it. That's good. Yes, but yet, and I've got experience, but yet the situation, the plan I have made, that it has already been overlooked by the cooperating teacher. I mean mm -hmm. by that the teacher in charge. Hi, someone is here. <laughs> Rafa. Okay. Rafa. Yeah, Hello, good morning, Rafa. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hello. Hello. How, how are you? Fine, thank you. That's thank good. You. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, thanks for asking. Cecilia isn't so good. She's mm. suffering from a very bad throat infection, it seems, and mm. she's fighting it. We're just talking about, you know, uh, she's got a lot going on, and she should actually be talking, but she's still, mm. she's trying, and uh, well, hopefully she gets better, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's good you joined us. Good to see you. How was your weekend, Rafael? Oh, my, my weekend is pretty good, but it was very, very, pretty good. I was enjoying with a very beautiful weather here in Madrid. No nice. so cold, no so hot. Last as the last two weeks is perfect right now. About 21 degrees and sunny, and I've been enjoying with my wife' birthday and having a oh, very nice, nice party with my friends and making a barbecue and dancing and. <laughs> oh, that's cool! So you had a little get together you know, for your wife's birthday, a nice barbecue. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I enjoyed nice. a lot of. You ate a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot of sausages and and, <laughs> and meat. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, sorry, I didn't ask you, Cecilia. How was your weekend? I, I'm sure it wasn't the, the greatest. <laughs> you, you had to rest. Not, rest. Not the greatest at all, but I uh, still I got in touch with my cousin uh, from Buenos Aires, oh, nice. and she talked a lot, so I talked a little, mm -hmm. and no, that was great. And here, the my son and his girlfriend prepared duff, boiled it, a duff that I don't know, a kind of donuts. Mm -hmm. Donuts or muffins? Or, or donuts or muffins. We call it in Spanish bunuelos. They Rafa, were sweet. Do you know what that is? Bunuelos? Rafa, do you know what they are? Yeah, a buñuelos. If I, I don't know if it's the same there in Uruguay than my country, but it's a perfect, beautiful, tasty cake <laughs> that you can enjoy. It's very, 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 very tasteful, very delightful. Yes, yes, and I didn't know that she, my uh, daughter-in-law. Uh, would cook so deliciously. Oh. Yes, but the, what I didn't know was that my son would be so, uh, so, um, I, I don't know the adjective, so devoted to the kitchen. That's what I didn't know. <laughs> it's love. It's love, isn't it? <laughs> it that's it. She got him into it. Yes, that's it. We, we, my husband and I were so impressed. Mm, that's great. Hi, Bart. And you, I guess you don't like cooking. Sorry, Servet. Oh, nice. Mm. Hello, Servet. Hello. Hola. Hola, hola. What did you say, Servet? You said something. I was asking. Teacher, yeah. yes. Do you like cooking? I guess you don't like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like cooking, teacher? Because Do I like? Servet and me. 
<laughs> so I like cooking. Enjoy a lot the cooking. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, depends. <laughs> it's uh, a practical not, thing. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, uh, it's not very likely to see me, uh, you know, with a, with a napkin or with some sort of apron, sorry, uh, and cooking away or baking. But I can if I want to, if I put my mind to it. Yes, I can do some nice dishes. How, have, how many, uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, you I was first. Gonna ask, do you have any suggestion for breakfast? Sometimes I usually prepare my own breakfast, but not lunch and dinner. Sometimes I need some new ideas. If you have something, maybe you can. Okay. Um, you know, I saw this once from uh, Gordon Ramsay. I don't know if you know Gordon Ramsay. I heard of him. Yeah, he's an English chef. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a lot of TV shows now, Ramsay's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Kitchen Nightmares and whatnot. And I saw once for breakfast, very quickly and briefly, he, he, it was like a, okay, like an omelet, but he used these big uh, champignons or whatever they're mm -hmm. called, you know? Uh, they're quite like the size of, of my hand almost, you know, and he fried them, he fried them without using any oil uh, for f maybe for a minute or so. Uh, he fried them on the, on the pan and he, they're very delicious, they're very tasty and the juice that comes out of them is very succulent and it's very nice and it's very healthy, I, I believe, to have that in the morning. So you can have them uh, next to your omelette uh, you know, with maybe if, if um, and what else could you have? You can have some. Um, you can mix mix and match. Have some veggies to go with that. I usually like to have some salami in the morning. I like I like meat, you know, and uh, so you can have various salamis, I guess. Uh, and um, yeah, with egg, and then you can uh, put a bit of spices, a bit of seasoning inside that egg to give it a bit more flavor. And uh, so there are various, um, you know, spices you can put just to give it, give it a bit, a hint of, um, you know, spice. But the little champignons, I, I don't know what they're called. If you go to your local grocery store or the, you know, markets, um, it's like a big mushroom, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, not, not the small ones, it's the big ones. <laughs> Have you tried this? I, I can't find the champions. <laughs> Something else, yeah. Uh, it's like a big mushroom. I've tried, I've done it myself, and it's really nice. They are really tasty. Oh. And uh, there's something else that he put up, but I forgot. Um, so that's something for a change. I don't know if, you, if you've tried that. Oh, what? I, I will look it up. I looked it yeah. up, but I couldn't find any pictures. Maybe spelling is wrong. Is it right? Uh, it's in the chat. I spelled it. Yeah, there's a gene. Uh, so, did your family that, like it? Or sorry? You did it for you? When you cooked it, did your family... Yeah, my, my wife like liked it. it. <laughs> I think my wife liked it, yeah. But, um, I don't know, she has her own breakfast. Usually she has biscuits and coffee. She doesn't have big of a breakfast. She's not a breakfast uh, type of person. But myself, I, I like to have a good breakfast. I usually just have eggs, you know, on toast. And that's what I usually have, a bit of salami maybe, and or tomato, that's it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually... I, yeah? I have another question for you, if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. Teacher. <laughs> Where, when is the last t time that you ever cook at home? Well, the last time I ever cooked... Uh, have you been in the previous class by any chance? Yes, the last previous class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we got... Cooking. Wasn't it? Yeah. It was about... The last time I've cooked, I haven't cooked for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy cooking, teacher? <laughs> Do I enjoy it? <laughs> um, depends on the occasion. Sometimes if I'm you know, cooking on a special occasion, I might enjoy it, but usually I'm not, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> Yeah. Do, uh, the, and the last question in my, uh, for, for my turn. Um, <laughs> do you think men and women could, could as share the duties of, of the house? Yes, of course. Oh. Could, they, could they share the duties of the house? Or mm. share, I mean, I mean, assist, yeah, they could assist each other, definitely. Uh -huh. oh. mm. Perfect. What's all this questioning, Rafa?
<laughs> no, no, only curiosity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm getting suspicious here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by the way, I said it, here's, uh, I think, how you spell champignons. Okay, there's a GN there. Ah, uh, champignons. Okay. I don't know if it is champignons. Mm. But they actually, <clears throat> maybe, just look for mushroom. Oh, I forgot what it's um, um, Big mushroom. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like this. That's what it looks like. Oh uh, yeah, I know mushrooms. Maybe not not mm -hmm. that. Yeah, not that big maybe, but mm -hmm. that's the pretty much. That's how you will find it. That shape. Uh, okay. Okay. And usually also, find it maybe. I think there there is another another spelling champignon. Yeah, yeah, it's different spell. <clears throat> In English, it's champignon too. Yeah. 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 I was looking on the I know in, in German, they, they say it as well, champignon. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a French word, isn't it? Mm. Or is it Spanish? It's not Spanish, is it? I think it came from the French. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. Um, Cecilia is waiting patiently yeah, for the good. class to begin. Okay, let's, let's start off, guys, and, uh, and get, get some conversation going. So, um, news and politics is our topic. And let me see, what are you going to do tomorrow, Sabbath? Tomorrow is... Tomorrow is Tuesday. Tuesday. Tomorrow I'm going to be home. So you're going to stay home? Yes. That's it? No plans. Yeah, no plans. I, I also have some um, things to do. Maybe I need to go to bank. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe running some errands. But pretty much I'll be home. Because generally okay. I'll be home. All right. And Cecilia? What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to uh, give an important lesson. Mm. OK. Uh, Rafa, what are you doing tomorrow? Are you asking about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah. Or today? Not tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna go to visit one f very close, very a friend of mine, very close that I'm hoping to see him for a while, and also I I am gonna go to play paddle in the morning and later go. To, I'm gonna go to to my job. <coughs> okay, what are you gonna play in the morning? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Is that a sport? Yeah, paddle. But paddle is a kind of tennis. Oh, I don't right. know if you heard about it. It's, it's like a tennis in doubles in a little court. It's, wow. it's very amazing. And I don't know in England people know it about them, but in Uruguay and, in, in Uruguay and Argentina mm. and Spain, there are a lot, a lot. Um, in the last years, uh, there are an improvement for play paddle. Uh, it's amazing. It's very funny. Better than tennis. Really? Amicia. So you yeah. play the two I, two people playing, yeah? No, four people, like four. doubles in ah. in tennis. It's the coach is very similar, but it's uh, shorter and weather and um, different racket. The racket. Different, different racket. Yeah. Have you heard about it? I think I've seen it in Egypt. I think they might play that same yeah, in Egypt. Could be. The the actual uh, racket is hard, isn't it? Yeah. It's a hard racket. It's not doesn't have springs in it like a net. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I have seen it. They do play it over there as well in Egypt, believe it or not. Hmm. And um, see, I was I never seen that before though. Must be fun. I never played it though. Hmm. So how do you spell it? P 
Pavel. Pavel? P A O A D P A D E L. Pedal, pedal, okay, like pedal tennis. Okay. Yeah. All right, I must look it up and see some video clips on YouTube. Mm. Okay, that's cool. So pretty busy for you tomorrow. Um, excellent. And um, so you're gonna see a friend of yours, and then after that you're gonna go to, to your job. Mm. Right. Now, you guys. I think you are very well acquainted with use, using future. Uh, we're using, um, you know, the future tense when forming future sentences. Are oh, you found your video? Thank you. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll look at it later. And um, yeah, so when we when we talk about the future, there is one very famous, you know. Not slang, but it's like it's Cecilia's the in infamous speech. <laughs> uh, gonna, as you know, going to. And um, uh, so we use that quite common, you know, as native speakers. Uh, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go to work now, or instead of I'm gonna, I'm going to go to work. Yeah. So gonna is quite common, and all three of you are very well. Um, at saying it, so I, I don't have to dwell on it too much. But basically, um, when talking about the future, this word is very common. And what is the other thing that we that we use for future? We, we. Yes, that's right, Cecilia. Will. Um, this is, I mean, pretty much the most common uh, word that represents the future. So when you're forming sentences, um, I will, um, you know, drive to Mexico tomorrow, uh, and then we have I'm going to or gonna, like we said. And what's the third one? Who remembers? Uh, present continuous. Yes. Give me an example. I am paying my bills tomorrow. Yes, I'm paying my bills. Excellent. So I am paying. Present continuous, and then you add the time uh, phrase at the end of that if you if you like, you know. So those are the three most common ones. Um, actually, the most common out of those three is the last one. You know, in the present continuous, I'm driving. I'm going. Uh, I'm going home, or I'm, you know. Skiing, I'm writing a letter, and so on. Um, I'm shopping tomorrow. Okay, so let's see. Um, but when we use will, we use it mainly when making predictions or statements about the future. Okay, so he will be the next superstar. Okay, or I will work on the project next week. Let me share this with you. So you can see. All right. <clears throat> so, and the way we structure it is uh, the subject plus will plus verb and then the optional time phrase tomorrow, soon, later, and so on. And uh, you can use will in the negative form as well. All you have to do is add not and, you know, it becomes won't. So Jenny won't pass the test. I won't go to class next week. Yeah, it's very simple. And um, then when using going to, we use it to talk about things you intend to do in the future. So you will use the to be verb. Yeah. So are, is, am, and so on. So they are going to buy a new house next year or they are going to buy a new house next year. I'm going to see one of the latest movies this weekend. Okay, I'm going to see one of the latest movies this weekend. And you can also use it in a, in a negative form. But here you add it uh, between the verb to be 
and going to. So I'm not going to study tonight. They are not going to buy a new car this year. Okay, so just throw it in between the verb to be and going to. Or gonna. And then thirdly, finally, we have <coughs> the present continuous. And it's the most common way that we talk about the future. All right, so same as before. You have the subject and then the verb to be plus the verb ing. And you can add the optional time frame. So he is working with Tim next week. She is meeting her grandmother in two days. Okay, and the negative form would be just like before, throwing the not between the verb to be and the verb ing. So he is not helping Tim this weekend. I am not working at the office, but new office next month. Now there's one thing I need you to keep in mind when saying gonna. Do you remember what that is? There's one time where you cannot say gonna. And we're, we're talking. Writing. Yes, but even in writing, in writing you're always gonna write going to, but I'm saying that when you're speaking. There's a time when you speak and you cannot say gonna. It, it wouldn't make sense. And it grammatically would be incorrect to say that. Maybe when the verb is to go, I'm gonna go. They don't say I usually say I'm going. Mm -hmm. Try and give me an example. Can you think of something else? An example. I guess when the verb is to go, you don't say I'm going to go to a supermarket. You say that I'm going to a supermarket, I guess. So in this case, you wouldn't say I'm gonna. Supermarket, you say, I'm going yes, to the supermarket. pretty much. Mm -hmm. So if there's no verb following that going to or going, uh, then yes, you have to say it like that. Can you give me another example? <clears throat> Cecilia, you know what we're talking about. Yes, but in that case, it would be present continuous. I'm going to the supermarket. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Ah, exactly. Okay, but it was, I think it was not what Servet was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. What you said it's more accurate. So I, I'm going to the, um, to I'm the going supermarket to go tomorrow. To... No, no, I'm going yes. to the supermarket tonight. That's future. Yes, I'm going. Yes. So Both going... are future. Exactly. Both are future. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the supermarket. I'm going to the supermarket. Yes. Yes. W yes. Mm -hmm. What are the what are the, is there another case where we don't use go gonna? Mm. No, this is the only one as far as I know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is the only one. So usually when you see going to, yeah, you can say gonna. But in this case, here yeah, I'm going. Uh, what do you say? I'm going to shop. No, no, no. I forgot already. <laughs> what did you say, Cecilia? <laughs> <laughs> when we say, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm yeah. going to go to. I'm going to go, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go to. Uh, uh, I'm going to go to the sh shopping mall or I'm going to go to the sh shopping center. Uh, or yeah. I'm going to go to the um, I'm going to go to or I'm going shopping or I'm going shopping I'm going to this the, sorry, the, there must be like an article following to so I'm uh, going to the shopping mall so yes. we can't say I'm gonna the you can't say I'm gonna the shopping mall right so I'm okay. going to the this is where it comes into into action. You know, when the, there's an article there, there's no other verb following. That's when you know. Okay, I have to say going to. I can't say gonna. Okay. Uh, if yes. I understood properly, yes. this, when you are using the verb to go, you can say gonna. 
No, 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 you can't. The, the, I mean, the verb to be. Mm. No, I am. I'm going to uh, go to the shopping mall. That's fine. Correct. You can see, yeah, I'm going to go. See, there is go there. Mm. There is a verb following. If there is, sometimes there is, um, there is no verb. Oh, see here, I'm going to buy. I'm going to study. So you can say, I'm going to study, I'm going to buy. Okay? Uh, but in our case here, what, we, what we're saying is, I am going to the shopping mall. So this is the only verb, right? Going to. I am going. It's like I am driving. So you cannot say gonna here because plus there's an article following and there's no other verb to, to sort of assist. This is, it's not a, um, do you understand, Rafa? This is the only verb. Going to. I'm going to the shopping mall. Yeah. Uh, in, in this case, yeah. you can say gonna. No, you cannot. In this you case, go. you cannot. No. Or you can Perfect. say, I'm going to work mm. tomorrow. Mm. You can't say, I'm gonna work tomorrow. Mm. In this mean? case, work me is a noun, okay? Mm. I'm going to work tomorrow. Or I'm going to my job tomorrow. Okay, because that, that's now a noun. It's not, you know, it's not, there's no second verb after going. You understand? When going is the only verb, you must say going to, not gonna. Yeah. You cannot say gonna. Right, okay? Oh, that's good. All right, Servet, yeah. please give us a sentence in uh, uh, using, using going to or gonna in the future. Okay. Let's say. <laughs> I hope I didn't confuse you or put you uh, on a no, no. Ca cautious note. Alan is going to cook us champing ons for mm. breakfast. Nice. That's good. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but <laughs> a good sentence. <laughs> yes, I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook uh, champignons for the class. Nice, uh, Rafael. Can you give me one? Yeah. Alan is going to cook uh, for us a very nice meal today. Ah, okay. Can you give me another one? Give me another verb apart from cook. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of cooking already. You're making me hungry. I haven't had breakfast yet. Uh, Alan is going is gonna make do gonna gonna make a sandwich for us. <gasps> Again, food. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make a nice sandwich. Excellent, nice. Um, Cecilia, can you give us one? Alan, <laughs> bake, bake, said it. Alan's going to take his son to the kindergarten after class. Nice. I like that. And that's true. I will. Excellent. So, yeah, you know all about this now. Basically, the will is quite easy. I don't need to take. Uh, you know, make you practice that because we use it quite a lot, you know. Um, but actually, just for the, you know, for the sake of it, uh, Rafa, give me a negative sentence using will. Mm, I, t tomorrow I won't go to visit my parent because I rather prefer, I rather prefer. Or mm -hmm. I'd rather go to visit my friends. Okay. That's good. Excellent sentence. Well done. Um, all right, then. So, are there any questions, guys? No. All right. Let me begin the, <coughs> the article.
here is the link for you guys in case you you would like to have it and open it. All right, this is an interesting article about Western Australia, the place I was raised. All right, so end of mining boom in Western Australia. As you know, uh, Western Australia is very well known for its mining and its resources. It's uh, what keeps the Australian economy going, really. And uh, let's see what this is. So this is quite recent, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Australia's economy has been experiencing steady growth over the past decade, largely due to a mining boom in the western part of the country. Most of the nation's mineral resources are exported to Asian countries, especially China, which buys most of its raw material materials from Australia. However, there are signs that the Australian mining boom is coming to an end. Australia's most valuable resources are iron ore and coal. Iron ore alone accounts for more than 50% of Australia's exports. Almost a quarter of the world's <clears throat> iron ore production comes from Western Australia. Half of every dollar earned in Australia comes from the western part of the country. Wow. The mining boom in Western Australia has also led to an increase in population. It has risen by over 25% compared to a decade ago and has become the fastest growing region of the continent. The boom has also led to uh, social problems because <clears throat> there are far more men coming to the region than women. Many of the new settlers work in the mines. Foreign companies send employees in and out of the region on a regular basis. As a result, more houses have been built and real estate prices have gone up. Actually, uh, would you believe it, the real estate or the property in, in, in Perth, Western Australia, is one of the, I think, top ten in the world. It's more expensive to live in Perth uh, than New York. I don't know if you guys knew that, but yeah, that's the case. Uh, so, landowners have profited by allowing mines on the land. People who work in Western Australia earn more than in more than in the rest of the country, but the cost of living has also increased, making Western Australia one of the most expensive regions to live in. There you go. However, not all is well for the mining region. The boom is dependent on global economy, and as China's growth rate is sinking, Australia is expected to suffer too. The price of iron ore is going down as global demand is falling. Australia knows that the mining boom will not last forever and is preparing for the future. It has vast oil and natural gas reserves in the north that are waiting to be exploited. Liquefied natural gas may become Australia's next big export product. Eco economic, uh, economic critics complain that uh, government has been investing too much money in the mining business while tourism and other industries lag behind. They suggest that Australia should not make its economy dependent on one sector and on a few developing countries. In any case, the fact is that Australia has become through the global recession of the past few years almost completely undamaged. So. In our global recession, Australia actually has not been uh, affected much. And they're saying, yeah, almost completely undamaged. But there is a change coming up, and the Australian dollar, I don't know if you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's falling already. Uh, and the mining boom has stopped, so there's going to be difficulty or, um, you know, come. So this is a picture from the bush in Western Australia. That is a train full of iron ore. You can see how long it goes. You can see the length of this train. Look at that. It's very we long. See it's the it's end. Yeah, you can't see the end. I don't think the picture was or the camera was able to capture it. <laughs> That's how long it is. Wow. Very interesting, yeah. So at the bottom we have some words. Uh, 
vocabulary in case you didn't know. So any any questions or any vocab which you need explaining? Not really. Okay. I think everything is here. It's quite a lot of words. Okay. So <clears throat> Okay, let me begin by posing some questions. All right, so what's happening to the Western or West Australian mining boom? I'm trying to use our, our you know, focus, grammar focus here, our future tense. So who can summarize it? What's happening to the West Australian mining boom? Since it, uh, the ex since they export the resources to China and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the the amount of resource you ex export will depend on the country's economy and the growth of China is falling down I guess mm -hmm. it is uh, slowing down so it will affect it's going to affect Chi Australians Yes. Uh, so therefore, yeah. Export. Therefore, the the Australian or the West Australian, <clears throat> you know, when they say mining boom, yes. boom, it's like a. Uh, do you understand the title of this? Yes. The end of the Just mining boom. Them. It was like a rush. It was like a yeah, like a huge uh, rise and increase in mining. It was like an ex ex uh, explosive. Um, you know, interest. Everyone was rushing there because there's so much uh, money to be made. There's so much work. You know, uh, I know that so many people in, in from the city, from Perth, they used to travel up north, right, where all the mining <coughs> mining is happening, and they earn up up to double the salary. You know, than what they because it's so hot up there and it's so deserted. You know, it's very uh, isolated in a way. And there's no life really. It's not like the, the city, you know, in Perth, and uh, where there's a lot more to do. Um, so basically, it was a mining boom. Yeah, and Servet was right to say, <coughs> you give us a bit more details. And uh, <coughs> Rafa or Cecilia, can you, do you want to add anything? Or do you want to summarize it in a different way? Yes, <coughs> that afterwards, from uh, this consequence of the China, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if call it crisis. I think that they call it, uh, or the valuation, not devaluation or crisis. I don't know, decrease in their economy. Uh, Australians are uh, thinking of moving to. Uh, natural gas mm. and and liquefied natural gas. So they they still can rely on another resource. Excellent. Well, which leads me to another to the other question. You're almost answering it. So Australia knows its mining boom will not last forever. How is Australia preparing for the future? So they are uh, they are going to rely on an, on natural gas as a mm -hmm. as, as another source of income. Yes, excellent. So basically, it says it here. You know, they know that the money will will not last forever. It's going to end soon. So they are preparing by, or they're gonna exploit their natural gas reserves. Yeah. And then also uh, so liquid liquefied liquefied uh, natural gas may or will become <coughs> their next big next big export product. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now the other one what can happen if China stops buying Australia's resource? In my opinion, the uh, the economy of 
Australia's economy could break down because it's but it's it is supported by the mining, um, exporting the raw minerals to China. Uh, if China becomes to slow down his economy, um, mm -hmm. Australia can be damaged for this kind of recession. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, will, we can say will. You can say will definitely be affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's a fact, as you know, they're gonna they are they are ex exporting a lot to China. So if if you know, um, <clears throat> if they stop buying from Australia, if the Chinese stop buying from Australia, it's gonna it, it's gonna affect them definitely. It's gonna be a negative for them. So yeah, that's good. Unfortunately, I wonder, mm -hmm. will Perth become a ghost city? Oh, that's scary, isn't it? You know, Perth already is one of the mo it actually is the most isolated city in the world, as in there is no other city close to it, you know. Uh, can you think of another city, like a big, because it's got about a couple of million uh, inhabitants. Can you think of another city where it doesn't have any other major city near to it or close to it? I, I can't, in any other country, I mean. But I, I'm asking because I, I don't know. I've listened. Mm -hmm. uh, I have listened, or I listened. No, simple past. I listened of Pers, uh, but I remember when you named it of the ghost cities in the United States that were stood for gold and when they uh, um, they took all the gold from the cities mm -hmm. then they became ghost cities yeah. and then I wonder if the Chinese are no longer going to buy uh, iron uh, mm. iron egg, iron hold on. Please, iron ore, iron ore, uh, it, it will become a ghost city. It's possible. Uh, definitely won't be as as busy. But there are other things which sort of keep Perth going, you know. There's a bit of tourism, you know, and um, uh, but it's a very family-oriented city. It's very quiet, so it's not like Sydney or Melbourne, you know, they're like, more than double, almost three times the size of Perth. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. It could very, it's very possible that, that might happen. Now, the final question: uh, What country will experience the next economic boom? What do you think? So, which country can we see, you know, experiencing some sort of economic boom? You know? And why? Dubai is trying hard. <clears throat> Dubai is trying hard for their tourism because they are building these uh, uh, luxurious hotels. Mm. The, well, don't you think that Dubai they already <clears throat> they already had their boom? But I don't know why they keep on building and building hotels. Yes. They, they, you know, they are basically <laughs> attracting the world. They want to invite the world to their. Yes. City. They don't want to lose their mm. their attraction. I think, because they they, I think that they are a place of a uh, investment. Yes, definitely. So I think they are experiencing some sort of. Problems because there's a global recession. You know, not many people, or maybe not as much as they would have hoped or expected, to be coming and spending in Dubai, in the city. Uh, so this is why they're a bit, you know, held back and they're in a sort of recession as well. But when they started off, there was a boom there already. But do you think that any other country will experience an economic boom? Like, 
a developing country or, you know. Can you think of any other countries? Servet, Rafa? No. No, no country comes to mind? Um, Brazil with the, mm. the, the, um, the World Cup coming up. The World Cup is trying hard to push uh, the country for tourism because they've got a great uh, coast with uh, with the beaches. As they have all the east, all the east uh, has got many uh, seaside resorts, and they try to promote the countries, uh, um, their countries' tourism. So perhaps they've got a push there. Yeah, there's a great opportunity for <clears throat> for Brazil to experience a economic boom an economic boom because yes. you know the World Cup's going on and it's happening next year so that they're, they're gonna have a huge <clears throat> um, following and a lot of people will be coming to their country and another country also that might experience some boom is Russia I think they're gonna have the Olympics uh, Right, yes. so they might also experience some some economic boom, uh, slight boom yes. you know, in the economy. Yes, <laughs> and as in my opinion, in Brazil, in my opinion, Russia. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, in my opinion, no, India that, could. Be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go, Rafa. Yeah, in my opinion, India could be another country that yes. could be could have a, another. Expansion and boom, economic, mm -hmm. because though due to the uh, increase of population and also is an emerging country that is yes. develop new technology and also a lot of consumers there are, are there. And India could be the most important country after China. Absolutely. In, in next yeah, in the next years. I agree with you 100%. I actually thought of thought of India as well, and uh, definitely they they can easily become the next uh, superpower even, and um, they are on their way, you know, to, to achieving that. And uh, I believe they're gonna experience some boom in the near future. Yeah, some economic boom. That's good. Okay, guys. Um, Okay, before we end, I'll, I'll briefly assess you, uh, even though I don't think I need to, but uh, I'll do it anyways, because you guys are very good at this. So here we go. Uh, Servet, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give you a, a word or a verb, and you just form a sentence using future tense. And you can use any of the three of, um, you know, forms. Um, your word is right. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna write a book. That's good. And send, but send in a negative now. I won't send a postcard to somebody this year. Okay. Alright, so I won't send send a postcard to my family this year. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Cecilia? Mm. Yes. Mm. Watch. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna watch um Da Vinci's code, which I had received for my birthday, soon. Excellent. And expect. 
is an expert I'm, seminar. I'm expecting good news from my mother this evening. Nice, very good. Quick thinking on your feet, I like it. Well done. <laughs> you said Ghana, right? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. I like it. And Rafa, he gold is one for you. <clears throat> Give me a negative um, and use read for the sentence. Read. Read. Yeah. I, I, I am. Uh, I won't read that book because it's so boring. Yes. Okay. And okay, use by in a. In the, in the third form, you know that we said, uh, you know, present continuous. <clears throat> so the verb is buy. I'm gonna buy a new clock because the old one is running is is running long or running out. Mm -hmm. It's out of order. Present continuous. I am, I am buying ah, it's better. a new. I am buying to, uh, a new watch. That's that's good. Yes, I'm buying a new watch. Perfect. <coughs> or you could add a time phrase. I'm buying a new watch tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Well done, Rafa. Well done, guys. You've done very well. Uh, do you want to ask me anything? <coughs> No. Everything's understood? No. Marvelous, marvelous. Okay, I'm going to let you go. And uh, nice to see you guys again. And I'll see you when I look at you. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'll see you next time, guys. Okay, okay, Bye. okay.